evidently the Romney campaign was doing a lot of this itself, and they had data that was not very good. It turned out that up until 5 o'clock p.m. on election day itself, when the exit polls started coming in, uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan believed they were going to win the election. And conservative world that had sort of coalesced around these candidates to support the nominee, as, as conservative media usually do, uh, believed that the polls were wrong and Romney and Ryan would win. It was a pretty rude shock um, to those uh, in the conservative media and to the Romney-Ryan campaign itself when they essentially got blown out in the key electoral state, uh, which also theoretically we thought was, was not possible because the unemployment rate was so high. And historically, no candidate had ever been re-elected with unemployment over 7.2%. And afterwards, one of the Breitbart writers, John Nolte, wrote this extensive mea culpa apology, basically saying, um, you know, we, we got sucked into this, meet, this bubble around the campaign and within conservative media, and we're never going to do that again. And with a few exceptions, we never did, and we never have. And there's been more of a voice of dissent now lately around Trump, especially discord, but certainly there's been more dissent within the conservative media world. Uh, the mainstream media world and the liberal media world, because there's a liberal advocacy side as well, um, got sucked into the bubble in 2014 and never left, stayed in the bubble, even after the 2014 midterms turned out to be a surprise victory for the Republicans. And that bubble persisted through 2016 and exploded on November 8th, November 9th last year when the story that we had been reporting, which is that Trump had a chance, um, suddenly became a reality. Now, I didn't think Trump was going to win either. I'm in the conservative media bubble, and I reported all of my stories on the trail as I was following Trump around the battleground states and the swing states and the blue states, um, as if Trump was running a losing campaign. This was a valiant <coughs> effort, um, but the subtext for what I was writing was this really doesn't have a chance to win. Um, I didn't say that outright. Uh, I, I said he had a chance to win. Um, I shouldn't say that I wrote him off completely. I, I, I thought it was at best a 30% chance he would win. Um, but I think what happened in the 2016 election was the bulk of the media um, really weighed in, not just with their expectation that Clinton would win, but with the hope that Clinton would win. And it, it became quite obvious to Americans, not just Republicans, that the mainstream media did have a bias. And I think most people were, were, were fairly good at seeing through that bias and taking information that was valuable without necessarily taking the political perspective that was sometimes being spoon-fed with that information. Um, one of the reasons CNN became such a punching bag for Trump supporters, unlike MSNBC, you'd think that conservatives or Trump supporters might like MSNBC even less, but MSNBC almost never comes up because MSNBC advertises what it is. It's a left-wing uh, cable news channel, whereas CNN basically puts on a pretense of objectivity and fairness and, and in reality delivers anything but. It's gotten worse since the election. Um, there was also, this is sort of a subplot, but there was a fight within the conservative media world over Trump. And essentially, the conservative media world shattered over Trump. Um, and you can see it today. You can see it in the fights between National Review and Breitbart. You can see it uh, in some of the coverage that happens at other publications. But National Review, in a sense, kicked off the fight during the election by putting out an issue before the first primary in which they had about a dozen writers opining against Trump. And the cover of the National Review said against Trump. And, and so, ironically, a lot of the same conservatives who had been attacking mainstream media bias for many years were in the same bubble as the mainstream media uh, on election night 2016. Uh, generally, and we discuss this all the time in Breitbart because we, we are an advocacy journalism site, we do have a bias, we do have favorites, uh, but generally we do best when we report the facts. And when you want to find our bias, it's usually in our story choices or it's in what we choose to elevate to the front page. Um, and, and that has risks. I mean, you know, I, I don't mind talking about the Roy Moore race, where you know our executive chairman was um, very involved in pushing Roy Moore's candidacy, and um, you know we reported that candidacy when everyone else wrote it off. But, you know, it's always nice when you, you see potential in something and no one else does, and then it wins. But of course, um, nobody had any idea, or the allegations hadn't been reporting it, reported against Roy Moore, and so you know you have this this burst. Um, I wouldn't call it a bubble because there was no period of denial. You know, there was no period of facts we weren't looking at. Um, but you know that's the risk of advocacy journalists. When, you're, when, the, when the side you're advocating for goes south, it's really bad. Um, but the philosophy, and I think, I think one of the reasons we, we sort of weathered this crisis better than some previous ones, is that we, we basically stuck to journalism. You can quibble with the stories we decided to do, um, but there was never a stage at which I think anybody at Breitbart denied um, facts. And, and basically, the, the line from the beginning since this story came out was, let's just wait for more facts. Um, I think that the mainstream media are getting better um, at finding facts. Certainly, 
having the opportunity to cover a, a White House where a lot is going on and where the president's very accessible and says crazy things all the time um, is an opportunity for journalists to comment, to report. There's been some, some classic journalistic successes with CBS 60 Minutes, I think, taking the prize with their reporting on a nominee, I think it was for Drug Czar, who had some troubled relationship with the drug lobby in the past and then he withdrew the next day. So, I mean, there's a lot of traditional journalism going on. Um, but there's also a lot of journalism that's con continuing um, where the media left off in 2016. And I think that the, the danger is that the mainstream media particularly are alienating their readers. Um, the Washington Post and New York Times like to boast that they've added, they've added readers since the election because they're so antagonistic to Trump, basically. So uh, their subscriptions have gone up, and that's fine. Uh, you know, but then they're, they're, they're basically following our model, uh, which is why they're doing better. They're catering to a partisan audience. Or, a, or an ideological audience. Um, and we've always said we prefer that they state their biases up front. They're not quite there with us yet, but, um, but that's what they're doing. Um, the Washington Post, you know, which, which exposed the Roy Moore story, the same week ran a completely 100% um, false story on, on Matt Drudge, uh, alleging that he was some kind of a Russian agent because he had uh, directed a couple of his links to Russian sources. And he responded by pointing out that 37% of Washington Post's website referral traffic comes from him. So, um, you know, they've gone in for some conspiracy theories. I think that bubble is going to burst. I think the Russia theory is basically another bubble. Um, and I think there's a lot of sorting out to do. But basically, you know, my job as an editor at Breitbart is to weed out opinion from facts. I write a lot of opinion, but we mark it as opinion. When it comes to what the reporters I supervise do, uh, my job is, is to strip the articles of opinion because I care about the facts that they're reporting on. Maybe the facts we've chosen to report on have a particular political or partisan edge to them, and that's fine. But I know that those facts are not effective and not convincing if they come packaged in opinion. Um, a lot of young writers have a lot to say, and they think that opinion writing is, is, is the way to go. But I turn down 99% of the submissions we get from outside because they're too opinionated. Um, so I think that as long as journalists focus on facts rather than opinion, um, even if your publication is taking a side, you're going to be on the safe side. Um, you, you may have some explaining to do as to why you thought something was a story when it wasn't or whatever, but um, I think that's the best way to maintain integrity. And you know, we, we tend to criticize the idea of objectivity, but I don't think that means throwing away accuracy. I think accuracy and objectivity are two different things, and I think accuracy is, is what you have to do above all. <coughs> Julie? Um, there's too much for me to possibly 